Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the RT Pharma Labs Limited Q4 and FY 2024 earnings conference call hosted by Valerum Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anut Sonpal from Valerum Advisors. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Anut Sonpal from Valerum Advisors. We, um, we manage the investor relations of RT Pharma Labs Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the fourth quarter and financial year ending 2024. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and, un and uncertainties that could result, which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to the management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Let me now introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. We have with us today Mr. Rashesh Gogri, Chairman, Mrs. Hetal uh, Gogri Gala, Vice Chairperson and Managing Director, Mr. Piyush Lakhani, Chief Financial Officer. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Gogri to start with his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome all the analysts and investors to this earning call on the performance of RT Pharma Labs for the quarter and the year ended March 31st, 2024. Our results documents were shared with you earlier, and I hope you would have got a chance to go through them. To begin with, let me provide you the business highlights. The company operates in three distinct areas within the pharmaceutical industry. One, Xanthine derivatives to API and intermediates, and three, CDMO, CMO state. The Xanthine derivative segment contributed to 44% of the turnover in Q4. As you know, we we have the largest manufacturing facility in India for the Xanthine derivatives. In order to fortify our position, we are undertaking brownfield capacity, brownfield capacity expansion and working diligently towards debottlenecking of our plants. The API intermediate business contributed 37.6% of the turnover in Q4. And out of our out of the API and intermediate turnover, the regulated market contributed 54%, and the rest of the world contributed 34%, and the balance 12% was from the non-regulated market. The regulated business continues to remain our area of focus while offering higher profitability and stability to our business. Strategically, we are present in lifestyle drug market, which is low volume, high value business. This category includes antihypertensives, antidiabetic steroids, and oncology drugs, which are sticky in nature. We offer real advantage to the customer, that is one, lower cost due to backward integration, and two, minimum dependence on China for KSM. This advantage is position us as a favorable partner among global customers. Third segment, CDMO CMO business contributed 18.4% of the turnover in Q4 in CDMO CMO space. We are presently working with 16 customers on 40 projects, of which 21 projects are commercial and 19 are under different stages of development at customer's end. This highlights our presence in late phase projects. We are also working on expanding existing chemistry capabilities of peptides and oligo, nucleotides, ADC linkers, etc. In CDMO, CMO, our USP is strong expertise in commercial scale-up manufacturing, which enables us to forge long-term supply partnership with our customers. Now I will share the key financial highlights. Facilitated financials, I am pleased to announce that Q4 FY24, we have recorded the highest EBITDA in the net profit till date. For the Q4 FY24, the concentrated EBITDA from the operations stood at 117.5 crores as compared to 95.7 crores in the previous quarter. That is an increase of 
POQ and on a YOI basis, the consolidated EBITDA grew by 47%. The consolidated tax for the quarter was 65.3 crores, which was higher by 24% QOQ and 52% YOY. For the entire year, FY24, the consolidated EBITDA stood at Rs. 386 crores. This was 13% higher YOY. The consolidated tax for the FY24 was higher by 12% at which is 217 crores, resulting in EPS of 23.9 rupees. The consolidated net debt to equity as on 31st March 24 was 0.14 percentage. Standalone financials for Q4 FY24, the standalone EBITDA was 107.3 crores. This was higher by 22% QOQ and 40% YOY. Standalone debt for the quarter was 63 crores, which was 31% higher QOQ and 58% higher YOY. For this entire year, 24, the channel on EBITDA stood at 346.2 crore, and this was 12% higher compared to the FY23. The channel on tax for the financial year 24 was higher by 17% at rupees 201 crore, and this translates into a channel on EPS of 22.1 rupees. The return on capital employed improved to 18% for the FY24 as compared to 17.7% for the FY23. The board has recommended a final dividend of rupees 1 per share in addition to an income dividend of rupees 2 per share paid earlier in this year. Let me now share the updates on the ongoing uh, expansion projects. We are expanding our relationships with the several large corporations for supply of banking derivatives, primarily cash in. For the same purpose, we are in the process of enhancing our production capacity of our banking derivatives units, such that additional land parcels are likely to be purchased, and we target to complete this brownfield expansion project by the end of FY25, and thereby a total production capacity of uh, 750 metric ton per month will be achieved. This expansion will entail a capital expansion and additional working capital borrowings. Our project at Atali, primarily focusing on CDMO, CMO, and internet manufacturing is progressing as per plan, and we expect the commissioning by Q4 FY25. As discussed with you last time, we are nearing completion of semi commercial blocks at the, our USFD and intermediate manufacturing site at Wapi, and this is expected to become operational in the current quarter. I would also like to share that we have undertaken a project in Akola, Marsha, to set up a solar power plant. This will help us to get the clean and green electricity, which is estimated to fulfill our one third of our power requirement and reduce overall manufacturing cost at the same time. It will support the sustainability goals by reducing the carbon footprint. These steps underscore our deep and continuous commitment to business expansion, sustainability, self reliance, and keeping up with the customer's needs. Talking about the future outlook, we expect to achieve EBITDA growth of approximately 10 to 12% in FY25 and remain well positioned to achieve a long term goal of around 15% annual growth in next three years. I now request the moderator to open the forum for QA session. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Thank you. We take the first question from the line of Rahul Jain from Credit Wealth. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a wonderful set of numbers, sir. So my first question is with regards to CDMO. CMO. Uh, we have done exceptionally well on this segment of the business uh, for last two quarters. And in the current quarter, we have almost reached about 76 crores of sales from CDMO, CMO versus 53 crores. And for the full year to date, it stands at 177 crores compared to around 100 crores last year. So sir, two questions. What is the sustainability of this segment to grow further from here? Uh, in the previous call, you had spoken that 
we expect this segment to grow around 40-50% for next 2-3 years. So, you can share some more details on the sustenance of and the growth of this segment. Yeah, as I mentioned uh, to you earlier and as is reported, you know, now we are working with, uh, uh, you know, more than uh, uh, 16 companies on, on 40 projects out of which 21 have become commercial. And with this uh, expansion and the way in with the progress of these projects happens with our uh, partners, you know, we will see growth in this business area. And that's why in last call I had project when we seen retain that kind of a number of possibilities in this business segment. So we have done all the right things. So now we have a new R and D center which is completely focused towards innovator. We are also investing in a new manufacturing facility which can cater to the additional requirement of uh, manufacturing capacities. And uh, with the right regulatory focus, I think we can grow this business faster. Mm -hmm. And so with regards to margins, again, this quarter we have recorded record margins, uh, both on the EBITDA and the gross margins. Our gross margins today stand for standalone entity at almost 55%, and on console basis at 15, 50, 50%. So how do we see the sustainability? What is driving these margins? It is only on increased CDMO contribution. And secondly, what do we feel are the sustainable gross margins? Yeah, definitely the CDMO business is uh, uh, more lucrative than the rest of the businesses that we are operating. However, our overall uh, other business segments are also, you know, uh, API and the caffeine business segment is also having reasonable uh, gross margins. Uh, Quarter to quarter, as we deliver and uh, meet the customer's requirement, the quarterly there would be ups and downs, but we are hopeful that we will be able to maintain uh, close to 50% cross margin, I think. Uh, yeah, at annual basis. And 50% on console basis, right? Yes. Uh, we generally talk about annual, uh, you know, standalone because console we have got trading entity also which gets consoled and in the trading activity we may not uh, have that kind of uh, gross oh, margin. Because so standalone gross margins are fifty five percent, sir. That's yeah. why I asked that question. Yeah. So that will that will rationalize to around fifty long term. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Add to, add to it, you know, uh, 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 apart from the margin, you know, percentage margins we normally track the absolute numbers because the percentage margin is a, again a function of FG prices which in turn is a function of RM prices. So at least you know in some of the business when the RM prices goes down like in Zentin or for consolidation we have a Ganesh Polychem where the pass through mechanism is you know when the RM prices go down we pass that uh, you know, advantage on to the customers. So normally you know we track the absolute growth in uh, you know, the profit numbers. Sure. So with regards to your guidance on EBITDA growth, uh, previous presentation and con calls you were talking about EBITDA growth of 12 to 17 percent for next two, three years. And in the current presentation, you have mentioned that we expect EBITDA growth of around 10 to 12 percent in FY25. Now, if I just take the average of last two quarters EBITDA, even if I sustain that average of last two quarters, we can be at around 10 percent EBITDA growth for the full year FY25 compared to FY24. So are we trying to be a bit more conservative on giving guidance for FY25 for the EBITDA growth? Yeah, for the FY25, we are already on a, sitting on two good quarters. And of course, uh, the market uh, is volatile, as you know, the pharmaceutical industry. However, we are trying to be more and more in the stickier business and with the profitable business. So generally, we want to be moderately conservative in all our, uh, you know, guidances. Okay. And last question, sir, with regards to the CAPEX, which has been completed till date, uh, because uh, this CAPEX, which has been completed, you had done some bit of it in FI23 and also FI24. So typically, as we speak today, at today's prices of all these segments, Typically, what kind of business can be generated on a standalone basis from all the three segments put together at optimum utilization? 
Yeah, currently we are almost utilizing our, uh, you know, venting plant at uh, 90% capacity utilization, and other plants are also utilized at 85% capacity current DVD expansion. But now going forward in next one and a half year, you know, we will have a lot of uh, capexes which are upcoming, like Atali manufacturing plant, a new plant, uh, a new block at uh, USSBA location in Wapi, as well as the debottlenecking of uh, Xanthine plant. So all these three uh, projects will enter a lot of capacity unlocking or new capacity addition which will come up for the FY26. And that is when we will see a, a growth uh, uh, 26 onwards as we occupy more and more of these capacities with the production. Sure. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Pratik Bantia from Girik Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hello team. Uh, great set of uh, performance. A uh, couple of questions from my side. Uh, so, firstly, uh, in, in the current, in the last quarter, uh, we were supposed to start the backward integration for Xenthine, uh, uh, which would reduce our dependence. So, has that led to uh, some uh, bit increase in the margins, or uh, uh, and was the plan started in the fourth quarter? No, that uh, manufacturing asset uh, uh, is operationally ready, but looking at the current manufacturing uh, uh, cost and the prices of uh, product availability from China, we are not opting to continuously operate that plant. Okay. Uh, looking at very lower pricing availability from uh, the market. So we are keeping it ourselves ready, but there is an upper cap, so if the prices go above certain value then we will always operate our facility. So that has not impacted on our margins per se. Understood. So how should we understand uh, the improvement in the EBITDA margin? It's driven by, if you could, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, if, uh, which was like the segment which has the highest impact followed by, you know, the, the, the next uh, segment. Uh, if you can uh, uh, just line up uh, that way. Which segment is impacted the highest in terms of uh, incremental EBITDA for the quarter? Yeah, we are seeing improvement of uh, overall performance in CDMO, CMO uh, segment, and also API and intermediate segment has also done well. Okay. Traditionally, our uh, Xanthine segment was doing well, but now overall with this growth percentage, I think the Xanthine has uh, peaked, you know, in terms of. Uh, with the current capacities that we have, and we are anyway further enhanced, going to enhance our capacity in the next uh, 12 months or so. So yeah. then we will again have more uh, improvements uh, from that segment going forward. Interesting, interesting. And uh, as you mentioned, Q125, uh, uh, the, the, our uh, factory at Wapi is going to see some uh, expansion. So uh, is it is it the uh, is it the API or is it going to be on CDMO side? Uh, yeah. Q two Q two Q two we will yeah. this current quarter we will have an expansion. So we are going to have additional manufacturing block which will basically uh, it's a semi commercial block yeah. and we will have more of these capacities so that we can do more feeding projects or the early. Uh, requirements of the customers of 200 kg can be met from this manufacturing side. Okay, so we'll reflect in Q2, the, the revenue. Yes. Q2 okay. onwards, yeah. And it is around 28 reactors of 28,000 liters capacity, right? Yeah, so they are very small reactors and that was a gap that we had in our current setup of uh, intermediate manufacturing. Uh, to have a uh, this uh, size of the reactor, which is uh, predominantly required for the customers for their development stage, so which we are trying to uh, fulfill. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, uh, again on the CDM also incrementally, I think two new molecules have been commercialized in the quarter. Uh, if we just go by the commentary made in the presentation, so uh, now. Uh, uh, what so we uh, so so what sort of incremental revenue would those two new molecules be contributing 
uh, and uh, uh, and you and can you just uh, give us again your outlook on CDMO, uh, which therapy is more focused upon, and uh, what sort of uh, are we what is the share of innovator you look uh, over the next two years uh, because it's CDMO CMO both. Yeah, that. Yeah, we are operating both the segments of CDMO and CMO. And largely, uh, it is more CMO which brings larger revenue, uh, uh, repetitiveness uh, uh, in the business. We are currently working with uh, 16 uh, innovators or the partners. And as you see that there are 40 products that we work with them, and these products have grown over a period of this entire year. We started the year with... Uh, uh, close to 28 products and now we are at 40 percent so we have added 12 new projects in this year mm -hmm. and these projects uh, normally take two three years to you know fully uh, grow minimum so as the projects grow and depending on the product uh, uh, outlook of the customer so we have some good projects with uh, customers uh, large customers which have sh shared uh, good outlook with us Okay, so should we assume around, uh, uh, you mentioned around 30-35% growth in CDMO for the next two, three years? No, we are predicting, yeah, that kind of, overall we are predicting higher growth in this segment, so. Interesting. Okay, okay. So, and so, so since uh, Zenthine is a 90% in the fourth quarter exit, uh, then, uh, then that, so uh, until our new expansion comes, which will take the capacity to 9,000 per annum, uh, then this uh, number uh, 190 crore, which sorry uh, 220 crore, which we did in Zenthine, should remain at this right for the next three quarter, four quarters till the time we have capacity. Yeah, the product so the top line is, yeah. Same. yeah, yeah, the so, top line is dependent on the overall pricing and the metrics, uh, yeah. uh, how the prices are sustained in the marketplace. But I think uh, in the uh, spot market, the prices have now bottomed out. So we are not going to see further, uh, uh, you know, uh, prices going down. That is what is the current understanding of the market. Achha. And even and on the... We will have the expansion only next year. So the expanded capacity will come up. Uh, still, I think there is a possibility that we may further increase our utilization to 95% also. So that Achha. may happen in this year. But later on... Uh, next year we will have higher capacity. Okay, okay. And on the APS, I also. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. May we request you to join the question queue as yeah. we have several participants waiting for the okay. turn. Okay, there's a last question, then I'll join back. Yeah. And sir, last question on the, on this, on the cash flow statement. We have taken a, a R&D project right off of 6.76 crore. What is it regarding? So, uh, Pratik, that is uh, the projects that, uh, you know, basically we stop uh, working on, you know, uh, we, we think that, you know, there is not enough market or uh, we don't want to pursue. So then we do this exercise every quarter and whichever projects we think are not, we are not going to pursue in future, we take uh, that as an expense in the PNL. Okay, thanks. I'll join back in. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. In order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your question to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the question queue. The next question is from the line of Vikash Sharda from NT Asset Management. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi, good evening. I have two questions. One is, uh, what is the CapEx guidance for FI25? And secondly, in the in your opening remarks, you mentioned about the brownfield expansion of Zenthi. So could you, I, I didn't get it correctly. Could you repeat that, please? Yeah, in total for the FI25 is going to be capex heavy for uh, for our overall size. I think we are going to have a total capex of around 600 crores happening in this year with the three big projects as we mentioned in my speech. And out of this, the uh, venting uh, overall capacity, which is currently at 5,000, we are on the, uh, the button making it to 9,000 metric ton in the existing assets that we have by taking adjacent plots and uh, doing a brownfield expansion. Okay. 
Yes, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ahmed Madha from Unifi Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. I just wanted to understand the CMO business a little better. So the kind of products we are we have in the pipeline are this the full APS or just the key starting materials and intermediates for the MC? In the CMO business, we have uh, largely the products are in KS and RS and uh, regulated starting material, key starting material, a uh, large component of them. We still also operate in few APIs, but uh, 80 90 percent of the portfolio is uh, in this first two segments. Okay, and what are the shipments or the scale up which has happened in the last two quarters? So, can you give some sort of uh, uh, understanding on what kind of products are there or what kind of products we are selling? Uh, number two, uh, will the, the, the consistency in the volume should be there in the CMO every quarter or it will be fluctuating? in second half or in uh, one or two courses how, how will it function yeah basically uh, we will see uh, quarter to quarter fluctuations because you know normally these are multi-state products that we produce and if we have the orders of these products then you know it may take more than a quarter to do the manufacturing and these are all campaign based products uh, that our innovators uh, uh, partners uh, order with us uh, in, in terms of the profile of the products, you know, uh, these are all, uh, we are working with 21, which are already commercialized products. 19 products are under development. So that is the current profile that we have. And will be the only sole supplier for the KSMs which we are supplying or there'll be multiple uh, suppliers? Most of the innovators and the uh, manufacturers, they have multiple sources. So that could be a Chinese source or other European source possibly for this product. Okay, so are we seeing any shift from uh, the other suppliers to us? We, we are also basically trying to pitch in in phase two, three, when the uh, innovators are looking for more commercially viable sources uh, and that is where we are trying to pitch in. And the movement is basically between the medicinal chemistry uh, companies, those which are operating in that uh, space to us, where we are more commercialized focused company. So that is the shift uh, which we are seeing. Uh, geographically, also, I think uh, innovators have been largely dependent on China for KSM, RSM, and they want to reduce their dependence on uh, China for sure. Okay. The second question is on the benzene derivatives. So if I look at the standalone numbers and I look at the annual reduction in the top line, is it about 15%? So can you share how was the volume growth and the price decline this year, the breakup between the volume and the pricing? Uh, yeah, so the, there is definitely a volume growth vis-a-vis uh, -vis last year. As, you, uh, as uh, earlier uh, we explained that uh, uh, one say one uh, brownfield expansion that we did last year. However, the xanthine prices uh, have reduced uh, uh, drastically, and uh, along with that, the raw material prices also have reduced. So, because of that, you are seeing the uh, top line uh, degrowth. Can you quantify the price decline? The range about twenty percent. A price difference would be around twenty five. 20 to 25 percent, so it will be around 20 to 25 percent price reduction, and I think capacities have gone up by around 12 to 15 percent. Yeah. Okay, and the, the, just want to clarify the capex card. You said 600 crore capex, so can you just break it down in the uh, three projects which you are doing? Yes, yeah, so the major is major one is going to be the Atali project uh, that is uh, you know the greenfield project that is coming up at Atali in Gujarat. So that's going to be about 300 crores or so. Okay. Then additionally, you know, as uh, Rashid by uh, you know uh, clarified in the beginning itself, uh, we are expanding uh, the xanthine capacity at uh, Tarapur. 
and then and there are additionally we are also going to spend continue to spend on intangible asset development also another 40 to 50 crores will go on that yeah and we are also spending almost 80 to 90 crore on the solar project so last part this year so yeah 80 to 90 crore on solar project yeah sorry I think that, so that will basically uh, uh, take care of our one third of our man, uh, you know, power needs. So once we have our own solar, we will have a huge savings in uh, electricity, energy consumption, and spend that we have. I, I just want to build, build by a little bit in the capex part. So when uh, the uh, if the capacity will go from five thousand to nine thousand, what will be the capex cost? And we are still working on the number, so we we are not saying, but the numbers uh, would be in uh, one thirty to one eighty crore in that range. So we are still freezing those numbers. Uh, okay. And the solar plants, what kind of ROI are you looking at? What kind of cost savings based on eighty ninety crore capex? Because the number is large uh, considering the size of them. So what will be the savings roughly? Yes, you want to answer? Yeah, so the, the payback on that one uh, would be uh, no, less than five years, between four and five years. And uh, okay. in terms of a you know, rate of return, it would be about 20%. Okay. And the, all the, this is my last question. So, intangible development is at 40 to 50 crore cost. So, all this we are capitalizing on our books or how? Yeah, yeah. So, it goes under uh, the intangible assets under development uh, initially, and when the uh, you know, when the project is handed over to the plant, then uh, at that time it goes capitalized and amortized over a period of time. So this year we had about 40 crore uh, intangible asset cost. So how much did we book in the p &D? No, See, 43 crores was the total spend, of which 17 crores was capitalized. Uh, around 7 crores was uh, basically written off to p &D. And the other is still under that development, so it uh, remains under uh, intangible assets under development. Okay, so and squeeze the Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Maga. Maybe I must to join the question queue. Just finishing on this part. So, as soon as we commercial area project, we will book the cost on PNL. Yes, correct. Okay, so it is amortized over five years. It is amortized over five years, so it goes into the block, the fixed asset block. Got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants to please limit your question to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers. So my first question was on the CDMO segment. So during the year, if you look at it, our commercialized molecules, have gone up by like we have added five more molecules in our uh, already commercialized molecules of you know 16 which was there at the start of the year so mm -hmm. the scale up that we have seen in uh, the cmo cd you know, segments has they been primarily because of this five new commercialized molecules which have been added and you know second part of that question was you know uh, like do we have you know uh, the uh, uh, the commercialized in the commercialized molecule portfolio that we have are there any molecules which have a potential to become blockbuster molecules and scale up to, you know, 200, 300 crore kind of revenue per molecule over the next few years? Yeah, I will uh, just to give clarity on these numbers, you know, so this is a cumulative number of the products that we are mentioning is that 21 commercial we may not operate the all 21 manufacturing may happen in the entire year so these are the projects which are still viable and they are in the commercial stage whereas 19 products are in the developmental phase uh, at our end so that is the breakup and every year you know we may do some of them or we may do more of them so it depends on how the customer's requirements are and how they uh, request us to produce these products but these are the commercial products that we have with the 16 customers that we have and in terms of uh, uh, overall you know we have good uh, projects of course uh, we can't share uh, confidential detail about the size and uh, because we are bound by the confidentiality agreement with our customers 
answer uh, the second part of the question you know do do you have some forecast on your uh, you know innovator company that uh, some of these molecules or few of these molecules have a potential to become blockbusters and you know uh, reach a scale of 200 300 crore uh, from a single molecule not you know in the near term but maybe let's say you know uh, three four years down the line when they scale up yes so i did reply to you that we can't share that information there are some good potential products that is what we can share with you now okay. so my second question was on the xanthin part you know xanthin uh, we are doing a you know despite a significant uh, decline in prices we are uh, expanding our capacity in a big way from around 5000 tons to almost 9000 tons and uh, so you know uh, what uh, what is leading uh, to this expansion you know such a big expansion and you know how are we seeing you know the growth in the segment over the next 2 3 years so typically yeah yeah uh, yeah so typically all our customers are looking at us as a sustainable partner and to have a significant uh, portfolio on uh, their uh, purchasing list we find it it is important for us to expand and be a world scale capacity for xanthin uh, business and that is the reason why we are expanding yeah. and uh, as everyone also is seeing you know china plus one uh, is a very important uh, criteria for all the customers in current uh, times so we already have tied up for this uh, incremental capacity which is coming up like we have indication from our customers for that uh, uh, yeah the indications are there and uh, beyond that it is confidential to share more details yeah, so but, uh, on the api intermediate part you know we saw uh, uh, you know top end of uh, growth of around 9% last year so what is the outlook for this segment you know how do you see this segment shaping up for us over the next 2 3 years uh, yeah, so there is a, uh, as Rasa uh, explained uh, in his speech, we have a lifestyle uh, APIs where uh, which are uh, sustainable and which are quickly in nature, where uh, you know anti cancer, uh, anti diabetic uh, range of uh, products, which we are uh, looking at some growth potential in coming years. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of. Nitesh Dutt from Berman Capital. Please go ahead, sir. So thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a wonderful set of numbers. Uh, my first question is, is it possible for you to quantify the economics for your three segments differently? So basically ROE or ROC, uh, gross margin and EBITDA respectively for Xanthine and non-Xanthine. CDMO and APIs, I understand it might be clubbed. But for Xanthine and non-Xanthine, if you can uh, separately classify. Yeah, currently we are not doing this classification. Maybe uh, we will look at it if there is the possibility of doing it in future. Got it. Uh, so on Xanthine side, right? So uh, the end market demand of Xanthine derivatives, in my understanding, is growing at a five to seven percent CAGR. Now with fifteen to twenty percent market share, you are a sizable player already globally. So uh, if I look at a longer term horizon, right, five to seven years. Will you be uh, uh, growing at a similar rate uh, as the end market, or uh, are you looking at a much faster growth rate? And what will support this growth? Uh, as you know, that we are 15, 20 percent uh, in terms of market share with these large customers, but you know they are definitely requesting more quantities for us from us, and that's why we are expanding and. As Hetal mentioned, that you know we would be doing this expansion wisely to ensure that we remain a very uh, sizable player in this market among top three in the world. So that is the endeavor uh, that we have. That uh, you know we have sizable capacity available for their requirement. Overall, we see developed market uh, growing. India market is also growing in terms of demand, and we also see diverse usages of these anti derivatives in. Home and personal care, and we have also. I, I was reading an article today that there is a possibility of usage of these anti derivatives in the EV space also. So there are newer end usages which we anticipate may come apart from the uh, uh, traditional end usage of the anti derivatives. There is a possibility of that also. 
Professor, you had previously also hinted at new capacities for xanthine in China, etc., right? And now as you are also adding, significantly adding capacities, so do you foresee any kind of overcapacity scenario in, in the market and especially competition from Chinese players? And also this 9,000 uh, empty capacity, how soon uh, do you think you will be able to uh, uh, utilize that effectively? Uh, so basically, uh, yeah, I think uh, since it is a brownfield project, uh, just to answer to your second question, the capacity utilization uh, can be relatively faster, though the approval uh, gestation period will be there, uh, but we see that uh, we will be able to have uh, the capacity utilization within uh, uh, two years' time. And uh, uh, yes, there is uh, going to be a significant uh, capacity and uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, the strategic uh, geographical uh, uh, which we would want to bring in and uh, our customers are also excited on uh, the expansion front uh, with us. So, so basically the advantage that we are, yeah, the advantage that we are giving to the, our customers is completely non-dependence and also the green and sustainable uh, uh, manufacturing assets that we have with the green power that we are now investing in and our overall total carbon footprint also to be much better than the other competitors. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So, so basically you don't foresee that overcapacities might be a challenge because of uh, non-China and uh, uh, sort of uh, green product, uh, your value chain. And uh, second, if it is uh, active at the end of FY25, extensions happen by end of FY25, by FY27, uh, you are expecting to utilize it fully, if I got that correct. Yes, yes. Oh. Sorry. Yes. And sir, on your uh, right PNL, uh, this quarter, OPEX has seen a drastic increase of 35% QOQ and 27% YOY. So uh, that is one, what we see as a normalized level. And second, uh, our tax rate has also been 32% in Q4 and 28% for FY24. And there are some deferred tax liabilities of 100 CR plus. So want your input on OPEX and tax rate. Yeah, so OPEX in this quarter has been higher. The major component as we uh, earlier also touched upon was that there's a write down of R&D, uh, deposits in R&D uh, to the tune of around six and a half crores. And also in line with the increase in the sale, there has been an increase in the freight. Uh, so that these two are the major components which has uh, basically you know contributed to the uh, increase in OPEX quarter on quarter in YY. But if you see year on year, you know it has uh, barely grown by four crores, so from 303 to 307 on consolidated basis. Thank you, sir. Before we take the next question, participants are requested to limit the question to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Dhvanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so my first question is on the TVMO. Uh, so you talked about uh, you know development on the peptide side. So, uh, you know, if you can uh, talk a bit about capacity development on some higher entry barriers, things like KDC, peptides, sterile, uh, you know, uh, where are we on that capacity and capability building? And, uh, you know, a question tied to that globally with GLP-1 thing, uh, you know, there is a lot of shortage on the, uh, you know, on the API side, which are peptides and pill to finish side. So, are we there anywhere there in that value chain uh, present? Yeah, as you rightly mentioned, that these are high barrier, uh, uh, you know, research which requires us to enter this segment and we our endeavor with the new R&D center and the newer, uh, uh, you know, capabilities of the partners that have joined us in this uh, new R&D center is to establish this uh, uh, business uh, going forward. And I think it will take a couple of years, two to three years for us to uh, gain confidence, have more uh, skill sets uh, and some manufacturing assets being put up simultaneously uh, to develop these segments in future. So that is what I mentioned that we have started uh, the journey I think uh, it will take two, three years for us to see some, uh, you know, light of the day in this area. Okay. 
So it's safe to assume that Atali expansion in current form doesn't include any of this. That's a safe mm-hmm. to assume that. No, no. We are investing in R&D assets currently. Mm-hmm. We are investing in R&D assets for the peptide uh, R&D, and we are also investing in the slow chemistry and other other uh, newer chemistry where we can do the high barrier uh, research. Okay. Okay. Got it. And second question, sir, on the API side, I think our uh, you know the API expansion, uh, you know, I think the validation and everything uh, should start and you know can kind of get completed. So uh, you know API uh, moved from 550 to 600 crore this year. So do we look at slightly better growth, uh, you know, once this because now this capacity you know, will come on stream and we'll start utilizing that. And when do we expect, uh, you know, 60-70% utilization of this additional API capacity that we have put up? Yeah, basically, Hetal, you want to take this question? Yeah, so uh, most of the validations are uh, completed and uh, we have uh, DMS has uh, got approved and uh, for uh, from this year onwards, we see we will see the growth uh, coming in from uh, the additional block that we put up uh, last year. Okay, so ten percent growth uh, that we had last year. So should we expect better growth because now the capacities are in place? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Got it. Thank you. That's from me. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Himalaya Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity, sir. My question is also on the CDMO side. Uh, okay, you said that the main work that you do is mainly KSM and RSM. So are you supplying these to the API manufacturers who in turn make the APIs and sell to innovators or are you working directly with innovators? We do both. In the space of yeah, in the space of CDMO, CMO, whatever the APIs are made by whichever partners, the all the rights and the patents are assigned to the innovator only. And innovator completely understands who are the KSM, RSM providers. So uh, you know, whoever we may be working with, ultimately we are working with the innovators at the end of the day. So an innovator is aware that RT is working with them directly, indirectly, and collaborating with them for this project. I understand. And typically in the CDMO space, what stage do we get involved in? Do we get involved in after the innovator has received commercial approval or we get involved a lot more during the phase one, phase two trials as well? See, there is a pre-clinical phase and there is a clinical phase and then there is a commercialization phase. So there are three phases. So we largely do and uh, we are not doing too much work in the pre-clinical phase. We do clinical phase, largely late clinical phase, and the commercial phase. So most of the projects that we are getting entry and where we are uh, working more closely is uh, the middle segment, uh, clinical phase, uh, where we are partnering with them. And then once the product become commercial, uh, we can see large growth happening in the projects which are uh, passing through this clinical phase approval. Understand. And uh, the choice of working with RT is made by the intermediate supplier or by the innovator who makes that decision? Innovator. Innovator is making this decision. Understand. And typically, what would be our market share for the molecules that we are working? You mentioned we won't be the sole supplier, but like typically of the supplies of the KSM or RSM that we are supplying, what percentage would be from us and what percentage would be from other suppliers from China and Europe? Ms. Shreya, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead with your question. Hello, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, so, so just a clarification. So you mentioned that the primary raw material 
facility for that in is currently non operating because we are sourcing the raw materials at better pricing from china so so can we use that facility for any other product yeah we are trying to uh, uh, develop new projects also based on that capability and i think in future uh, coming years we will see that happening also what and those and products will be value added products and so next question so you mentioned the big rational for investing into banking capacity is because a lot of innovator companies and our customers are uh, trying to find an alternative other than china sir so, but uh, is it not like because we ourselves are sourcing the raw materials from china so that doesn't directly reduces their dependency on china so I just wanted to get a bigger picture on how are the customers guiding us on the scene and what is the big rationale for expanding into this Yeah, we have capabilities of completely uh, uh, being uh, zero dependence on China. Also, only one intermediary that we have an option to buy from China or manufacture ourselves. But other than that, all other thirty raw materials are being sourced from elsewhere. So that is the rationale that they have, and we have developed and demonstrated the capabilities to do that uh, also. and that we are operating in time to time that facility also because we have to keep that ready as well just in case got it so that's it now thank you thank you we take the next question from the line of gorav from kcm please go ahead sir this call is now being recorded am i audible so i have two question yes sir Yeah. So first, as you said that we have increased the capacity from four thousand to five thousand in the Zanzibar. So that one thousand uh, in the FY twenty three, we have increased the capacity. So that is for export, uh, or we are consuming it domestically. Export, export, export. Okay. And the second one is: uh, Are there any approvals required for the increasing capacity from five uh, thousand to the nine thousand? And uh, uh, what are the uh, price delta for the uh, pharma and the food and beverages end use? Because uh, in the report, uh, it is mentioned that we are uh, increasing the end use as a food and beverages. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the the difference is uh, pharma. Uh, currently, we are not present in the regulated. pharma space in uh, uh, caffeine and theophylline uh, for uh, cep and usdms but uh, with this uh, new expansion uh, we will enter into that space as well along with so and uh, along with the food increase in the food uh, and beverage the so volumes are much bigger in food and beverage relatively compared to the pharma so pharma has a better realization but uh, at the same time the volumes are lower okay okay so are there any pending approvals uh, for the so really regarding to the uh, uh, since we are doing a brownfield project uh, the approval for the new capacities will be easier compared to the greenfield project okay and in the past if you see in the 2 to 3 years the price of the caffeine was very high and uh, that was the reason why uh, we were able to uh, you know achieve the good margin so are there any uh, now the prices are uh, prices are reducing day by day so are there any you know preparations done by rp uh, to overcome that and uh, you know sustain the margin yeah so along with the finished good prices the raw material prices also have come down to a relatively same level and uh, at the same time with this uh, solar project uh, uh, and we are continuously working on the improvement on manufacturing cost as well as on the raw material cost so that is a continuous uh, uh, practice at our end and uh, we will see uh, you know going forward uh, our endeavor is to be always competitive And are we are we trying any backward integration for the you know uh, manufacturing of synthetic caffeine? 
so we manufacture synthetic caffeine only and uh, as we have earlier mentioned that uh, we are uh, we have an option to be uh, fully uh, independent of china and have a uh, lot of our intermediate manufactured in house by rp and the group companies of rp apart from and the other intermediates to be bought from india alone Okay. And uh, now we are increasing capacity to 9,000. So again, the uh, you know 4,000 uh, ton capacity. So are we seeing any uh, opportunities domestically or uh, exporting the whole? Uh, uh, it will be both. Both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Agarwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yeah, I'm audible. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to know, like, uh, the brownfield expansion that we are doing in Atari for 300 uh, uh, crores, kind of a thing. How much is the asset turn that we expect there in a year's time frame? Atari is a greenfield expansion. It is not a brownfield. Expansion. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, greenfield. Yeah. Yeah. So in the greenfield expansion, the endeavor is to get one plus uh, asset turn, one to one point two. Depends on the number of stages that we are doing. Ultimately, the idea is that how do we get the gross margin improvement with these newer assets? So I think gross turn, uh, even if it is lower, I think the number of stages that we are adding and the margin profile of the product that we will do there. Uh, uh will define the profitability of this new asset and as you know once we are uh, uh, doing more and more cdmo cmo work and that side gets uh, operationalized with those uh, large requirements of the customer uh, we will have good uh, uh, overall gross margins uh, it may not uh, have great asset turn of uh, you know more than one i think so we will see how it goes Okay, and how about the other uh, greenfield capex apart from this? I mean, you had a total of six hundred, right? So there are only yeah two greenfield capexes that we are doing. Three and uh, total Atali project was three seventy five crore apart from the land cost, and the uh, greenfield project that we are doing is the solar where we are spending close to eighty to ninety crores uh, for the solar. Okay. So these two combined okay. projects are close to five hundred crore. And solar, you mean you already spent some money. Okay. Okay. So that will be operational in the current year only. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that will be operational within uh, uh, end of this year. Uh, last quarter okay. it will get operationalized. And payback would be five to six years. The payback will come. No, less than five. Four to four years. Four to five. Four to five years. Okay. Four to five years. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Rahul Jain from Credence Wealth. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks for the opportunity again. So, with regards to this Benzin project of five thousand to nine thousand, uh, in how much time do we expect to start this project, or by when do we start the project? Uh, It will be done in phase manner. I think we will have twelve to fifteen months in which you know we will be able to complete the expansion. Twelve to fifteen months from today. Yeah. Yeah. And typically, how much time it will take to ramp this up to the optimum utilization? Two years after the expansion is completed. Okay. And for this year, uh, that is FY twenty year, because that means the new additional capacity will start generating sales from FY twenty six onwards. So current year for FY twenty five. do we feel the volume growth given the optimum utilization what kind of volume growth do we expect this year fy25 on gentry or will be short fall short of capacity so whatever current of, of utilization is 90% so we will try to increase the utilization we endeavor is that how we can go to 95% or more so that is what the endeavor is but however you know as it is a brownfield expansion we will also be carrying out certain modification in the existing assets so with that uh, uh, you know and we will have more disruptions also so we, it's a mixed bag i think we will have to see how best we can utilize our assets okay and so uh, just to clarify in the previous call 
we have been mentioning about Atali Capex giving an asset turnover of somewhere around 1.6 to 2 times. So just to understand, you just mentioned it is around 1 to 1.2 times. So is there some change in what we are doing? No, that 1.6 to 2 number needs to be revisited. No, I, I think that's... No, no, we have not. I, I don't think that number, that there will be some confusion for that number. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure, sir. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Ahmed Madha from Unifi Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Just one question. If you look at the amount of capex we have done in the last uh, three odd years and also in the next two years, which we have guided, uh, my guess is we are roughly doubling our gloss work between FI22 and FI26. Uh, and if you look at the guidance which you are giving in terms of 10% or 12 to 15%, are they are they being too conservative or how should I look at? Because I'm not able to synthesize between the capex we are doing and the growth guidance we are giving. Currently, our gross work is close to 1000 crore, and we are going to add another 600 crores of uh, gross work in this next uh, year or 15, 18 months. So with that, you know, we will have a sizable almost 50, 60 percent additional gross block, and that is definitely going to add uh, uh, overall. Uh, it is going to add to the bottom line and profitability of the company. So the guidance that now we have earlier it was 12 to 17 percent. Now we are saying that it will be 15 percent and more. So that is what we have done is we have improved the guidance overall. Okay. And in terms of working capital, is there any scope for squeezing or you no know, improving it uh, from the current channels, or this is the steady, uh, steady number? No, in terms of number of, uh, you know, the absolute amount, we think, you know, it will remain at this level, but in terms of number of days, uh, uh, you know, we are trying to get it down. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you sir. The next question is from the line of Nitesh Tat from Burman Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. I had a pending question on our taxation rate. So for Q4, we had a tax rate of 32% and entire year 28%. So want to understand what is the normalized tax rate for us. And also there are 107 CR of deferred tax liabilities. So if you could just elaborate on that. And uh, these have increased from ATCR earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let me answer that. Uh, so basically, you know, uh, to answer the question on the normalized tax rate, it should be around, you know, between 20, 25 and 25 and a half uh, uh, of PBT. Uh, the reason why, you know, in Q4 and the entire year, uh, the tax rate has gone up is because of the operation, operationalization and capitalization of the new R&D center, which has come in, in Maharashtra. So in R&D, as you know, you know, uh, in tax, we get 100% reduction. Whereas in books, it has just come in Q4. So that has created the uh, difference. And that difference goes as a deferred tax liability. All right. And sir, on Atali, as you mentioned, 1 to 1.2 times asset term. So uh, if we just assume 20% or debit margins, which you have been making, and uh, roughly 180 days sort of working capital, our ROEs would likely be in low teens. Uh, so uh, what kind of ROCI ROE are we targeting from this project on optimal utilization? We will see, because the Atali project is largely directed towards the CMO, CDMO also. So overall, as the PI increases, we will see uh, uptake in the uh, gross margins also. So with that, I think uh, we will have a better number than what you are. Okay, also, sir, on the intangible assets uh, side, which you had elaborated on earlier, uh, on the balance sheet, uh, I want to understand the nature of these uh, uh, capitalizations that you are making. Uh, what kind of expenses are these? So both intangible assets under development of 58 CR and also other intangible assets of roughly 17 CR that you have. No, see, other intangible assets are the uh, capitalization of uh, these uh, products which we do R&D on. So once they are handed over, commercialized, they move under other intangible assets from intangible assets under development. 
Okay. If you can just uh, just elaborate on what kind of expenses are being capitalized, like is it the salary of employees, uh, material expenses? Yeah. So the expenses which are directly attributable to the R and D activity. So uh, as you rightly said, it is ex uh, salaries of all these people, you know, scientists working on uh, the development, as well as the consumables, the RMC that uh, raw materials that are used, and other direct uh, attributable costs like consumables. Understood. Last question of uh, from my side is on Wapi, uh, the apex that you are doing. So, how big is the unit? How much are you planning to spend? And uh, again, what kind of revenue potential or traction do you expect from it? So, Wapi, any commercial project? Uh, Good. Yeah, yeah. So, any commercial dollar block expansion is not a very large expansion, but uh, you know it is going to fill in the gap that we had. And it may not have too big material impact on overall uh, top line or bottom line, but it is going to provide us uh, uh, more seeding projects which can have future potential for our Atali uh, and uh, WAPI assets. Got it. And so, would you like to give any EBITDA margin guidance on uh, for the standalone business? I think you have mentioned 20 to 22 percent. No, I'm asking about the uh, margin. Margin. Uh, we are basically tracking more uh, the absolute number increase, as we earlier said. You know, the margins oh. is a function of top line, which in turn is a you know, function of, it is in some segment, a function of uh, finished good prices. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratik Pantia from Girik Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, just want some clarification on the capex. Uh, so, uh, in FY25, uh, how much is going to be the actual uh, cash outflow uh, on account of capex? Yes, uh, around 500, uh, around 550 crores on tangible and around 50 crores on intangible. So, we are looking at some anywhere between 550 and 600 crores of capex on both intangible as well as tangible assets. Okay, so uh, in our previous presentations, uh, Atali project capex is about 350 to 500 crore in phase one is what is written. Uh, now, uh, so uh, is there any change in the number? Uh, so there is no change, but then some of that uh, capex has already happened in this year. So how much? So how much has happened out of this? Uh, so what is the Atali capex total for? The total estimated capex uh, that we had uh, we had anticipated was is about 375 crores. Between oh, 375 apart from the land, uh, apart from the land. land. So land acquisition uh, had happened uh, a couple of years. Back. 50 crores. Yeah, that was another 50 crores. Okay, so that was spent before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so out of this 370 large land parcel that we have, we have a close to 80 acre land, and where we can do current uh, expansion kind of 10 expansions. So we okay. can put 10 blocks of 100 crore plus capex in the same site. So now the trend is that we put a large site which does not require re audits or re approval from the innovators or the uh, regulatory authorities, and that is the concept that we are driving with this Atali expansion. That we will have one very large site where we can rationalize the cost of manpower uh, due to consolidation of manufacturing assets. Okay, okay. So 375 was the uh, is the actual Atali capex, and how much is spent in 24 out of this? Around 30 crores. Okay, so largely you will be spending the entire capex in uh, 25. And then, and then this 1890 crore on solar is something new, right? Yeah, yeah that was approved during the FY24. Okay, okay, okay. So this 340 of Atali will be spending and plus will be spending 1890 crores on the solar. Correct. Right, and plus 46. The ground field of Xanthin. Okay, that is how much we, uh, and how much will be Zenthin? Yeah, one one fifty crore odd. Yeah, so as as it was clarified, you know, it is still uh, being frozen, but yeah, that's yeah. the kind of numbers uh, it would come to. Thank you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, we take that as the last question, and I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. I would like to thank uh, all the investors and analysts for joining our call. Good day. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of RT Pharma Labs Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.